who hasn't opened IPFS desktop on their local machine? So, so raise your hand if you've never opened it. Okay, two. Okay, so, so that's, that's awesome. It's great that a lot of you have used it. Um, so the, the goal of IPFS desktop is to, you know, bridge the gap between all of us who know what IPFS is and those who don't and are trying to just, you know, get, get, a, get a taste of it and, and hopefully contribute um, to, to, you know, a node in the, in the system, in the network. Um, and so ideally, you shouldn't have to start a node up from the CLI, but you totally can. Um, and it's trying to start right now, and it already is. So I'm just going to remove that there. That's not obvious. Um, but yeah, when it starts up, it'll, it'll start a node by itself uh, if one is not running. But uh, one little, we have a ton of little tiny like UX bugs like this right here. I've actually got a PR open that is really messy, but it does fix this and it changes the startup time, which if anybody counted is roughly 13 seconds to sub two. So non-visual startup time. Um, and this is Electron, right? This is Electron. This is basically web UI wrapped in Electron. So uh, uh here is the same exact thing, which does not start up a node for you because it can't really access your system, right? Um, and I don't have a, um, well, I don't have the settings. I don't think core's enabled to get that to work. But yeah, here's, I mean, it's the same exact thing. You can see that they're, yeah. the tabs and everything are the same. Um, yeah, what do you, I mean, what do you guys want to see? There's this files view, which when you click on it, when you first open the app, will not work. There is a bug right now. Um, so you have to click something else and then click into files and you can see it. Um, if you want to add a new folder, uh, there's actually an open issue right now where we're going to change this, hopefully, to add because new folder is under import. You can't import new things. So that's a UX bug. That's a usability bug. Um, so be visual. Clear, you are in charge. Uh, yes, i may, I'll make the claim now. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. I, I own IPFS desktop. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, thank you. No, no, I think this is exactly of even just flipping through this. So, so my, uh, I'll, I'll um, basically, I think it would be great if, as a wider community, we and my premise was that um, in other Web3 ecosystems that are usually more blockchain centric or more P2P centric, um, there generally is a very strong push to run your own node. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that we, that, that in fact, getting a bunch more people to run IPFS desktop, it will cause some issues like transient clients and all this other stuff like that and, and routing and so on. But I feel like encouraging more people to run nodes is, is it's a good, good. thing. Yeah. And then yeah. the next thing ends up being like, here's how you do a thing in IPFS desktop so that you can see your subscon subconscious data uh, or your curiosity data or your whatever, like like kind of sh like coalescing around the, the this is the like, Native IPFS viewer kind of thing. Yeah. Actually, the, the explore page is the perfect opportunity for that as well because it's had the same four things on it for years now, and I like it's just fairly boring. But that's the perfect page to have. Here's explore subconscious or whichever other project of the month that we want to be like. We can highlight them as like here if you're a user of them, explore your data via the desktop. Right. Yep. Um, that's amazing. One of the things I was thinking of is it's sometimes, and, and this maybe we covered a little bit of the whole like privacy concerns um, with this, but like this page, could we actually get people as part of a user story to like write up a file that includes like a message, hey from Boris, and I put in Vancouver, Canada or something like that, and I put it in there. And then we start populating a global map 
of where people are running IPFS nodes, like literally down to the user. Again, this is my first riff, and there's possibly all sorts of like, Boris, people can literally go to your house now. So, <laughs> like, are those kind of schemes something that we might we approach? Is that other than you, who owns that? Is that a thing within the PLN? I mean, it's cool, but like, what KPI or something would you be looking to improve? It feels like the kind of thing that one could rally maybe users. <coughs> to do to give a shit about IPFS. I think if if you had, you know, CDN over IPFS, which we kind of do now, right? Um, then that's your edge nodes, potentially, right? And I know Giannis is doing, uh, and uh, others are doing research on, you know, your K closest peers um, and optimizing that. So, you know, we could display, um, you know, like Cloudflare, AWS has all these edge servers where they're distributing their data and we can show like, hey, we have 300 times the edge nodes as, as they do. Now, if we don't show throughput and stuff on <laughs> there, that'd be great. Hearing up CDNs then, it just makes me feel like I wish Ansgar from Filecoin Saturn was like in the room, yeah. which I, who I, I guess is relevant also because their team may also make a different desktop app. Yeah. Is that the product vision? But maybe it doesn't need to be you. Know. Yeah. So, so. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so we've talked about a couple of different directions for for IPFS off over the years, right? And and ultimately, it's ended up being almost more of an admin user of these terms. Like yeah. it's not a thing that regular users often use, even though that might be the biggest number of slice of user pie. And they might not know what most of this means, and they might not actually get it to work at all times. But you could take it a few different ways, right? We thought about it being a home for basically like, you know, BY, bring your own front end developer tools with an accessibility model. Um, we thought about it as that would be the kind of like Dropbox vector uh, for where is my stuff? Because if my stuff's in conscious, my stuff's on vision, then it, this is really a big problem for FPS users generally, the where is my stuff problem. And then a third is option that we're talking about is kind of what you're talking about for us, which is it actually being really leaning into runway and infrastructure that kind of like, you know, be able to interact with the other people that are running our that I interact with and it being a real end user tool. Uh, right now, I, I don't think that there's a strong, as far as I know, a strong push in any of those directions. <laughs> well, I'll give you an anecdote for me. I mean, that's the best thought. That's when you try to build something with RPFS. It is a great developer tool. Yeah. Uh, Really? I it right away and installed it when I started doing our IPFS integration stuff. Because it was basically like, a, I don't have to think about it, like get an IPFS API locally on my system. I kind of wish that it was a little more helpful in terms of like, well, I just did a bunch of API stuff, and now I want to see like the list of all the stuff that got posted. Uh, like, totally. Perspection into like, what? Um, right. It's, it's, it's yeah, always yeah. the thing, like every, every hackathon, you even just get the developer to start prototyping locally, that could, like, again, all of these are slightly different from some yes. but that is kind of a lovely story. I have not heard that, and I did not expect to hear that at all, so that's fantastic. Um, there are two open issues, one for a diagnostics view. Uh, so they're all in web UI because the desktop is just an electron wrapper for web UI. Um, but I'm looking for feedback from the community for these, so thanks for prompting me to stand up here. Um, uh, yeah, I would love feedback on from users on what diagnostics would be useful. You know, there's talk about uh, putting a, a command line interface inside of the desktop app so that you can users won't that aren't familiar with the CLI can run CLI commands if they want. But from the inverse perspective, you know, if you run CLI commands which I will give you a short demo real quick if, I mean, I never use this, so uh, let me see if I can, there we go. Nope, uh, this isn't the build folder, but anyway, you can add, this is the web UI, so let me do, this has the build folder, and this will pump out a CID. See, I just added this build folder, it's running a node now, We've got an issue filed. Hey, I add a file. It doesn't show here, but that's because it's it's separate. Um, so, 
just things like that. When people are using the CLI, how do we display that information in the desktop app? Do we want to? How many users agree with you? Um, so please, you know, 1925 is diagnostics view. That also links to um, uh, 1220, which is metrics view. Um, and they're both open for discussion. Like, please add any and everything that you want to add anybody. Um, both of them are. So, I haven't really thought about this too much before, right? But so, 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 so sure. Hot takes, but uh, it almost feels right now like it's trying to do too much. Like it's trying to serve like end users and developers, and I almost have like two apps. One that's like here's all the data and dashboards and graphs and all of this stuff that people are currently plugging in themselves for Kubo when running it as a service provider. And then another app that's like really friendly, like just a mapless finder. Yeah. With a fuse plugin. While, while we're wishing it. Well, while we're at it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like, what way did you use is the UI? Yeah, that was, that's yes. what I wanted. I want maybe something in my menu bar, but actually I just do finder web app or fuse. Yeah. And I use finder, I literally use finder. That's just... So right now, um, the Fission CLI tool, uh, downloads and installs its own uh, Kubo binary uh, because when we started, we found it was very like the hardest speed bump was correctly installing and configuring uh, Kubo, so we just wrapped it. Um, but obviously, you know, having multiple IPFS nodes running is not ideal. On a bunch of right. Apps. Yeah, and that, that's the theme with almost every app that yeah. uses IPFS right now. So yeah. yeah. Um, and so those are the sorts of things that we really should explore. And if there was a developer version, we should make sure that you could like figure out a way to like install your vision tools and it knows the point of the right thing and, and so on, right? Yeah. We actually do a native IPFS publishing model where, where you post locally, you don't need to be online and then the next part is that. So Chris's use case as well, I think it's the same sort of thing for a lot of our, our users as well. So. Yeah, I know. I know you can. You can change. Um, yeah, it's it's all listed in there. Yeah, you can change which like a node that you're pointed to. But yeah, there's a lot of improvements to be made for that. And a developer based desktop app or um, could be great for like selecting a different implementation to install. You know, because right now it is it's just hard coded to go IPFS. Um, and then you can change like the the you know the location that your node is running at. So you could run any implementation, but we don't support, we don't make that easy for users or developers. Do have issues with consumer grade time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What is, what was the question? Even, too, so. Router style? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go IPFS Kubo. or Kubo. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so I, I don't know if this is like you're the right person to ask, but it might be some combination of you yeah. and other people, which is like I find myself like when I joined PL a few months ago, I eagerly downloaded this app, I was like flipping around, and then Same. every time I reboot my computer, it comes up with it or something. But then I always close it in a with some sense of frustration because I go to something that has a DNS link and in my web browser Firefox. And then it rewrites the URL to localhost, and then I do like command L to share a link to someone, and it's local, and I realize I just sent something that they can't click on. Is, and so I don't know where in the path between like desktop Firefox plugin, like and Cubo. Right. <laughs> so I, that's like my main. That's my feedback is like that's why I don't really use the app, and in fact I close it with frustration every time it's open because it messes with my like. Yeah. We, we talk about like there's a couple different approaches that we can take from a how do you from a share functionality that is more easily the way the UX is to be better than um, ever copying anything that has to close to it. Like that is an ultimately thing that I think we can provide, right? Um, but then there's also the fact that we're linking out of these other applications is also kind of problematic, right? So because those applications have constraints and you then have to set up things like cores. So we've also talked about approach where IBS desktop ends up becoming a launcher for IBS based UIs that are maybe pre-configured or have that permission. Like if it launched from IBS desktop, then it already has a 
uh, it either inject mm -hmm. uh, like load a whatever in the browser is, but I'm saying I'm showing you either inject the core stuff in there and there's no scripts, or you actually use it as a browser uh, where you actually add and help launch it. Which I would not, and I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah, we don't need another browser, and, we, <laughs> and I don't want to maintain it. That's cool. Yeah. But universal web runtime is, is a you know different way of saying do browser, but without a browser. And that's a yeah. challenge that every one of these products has to face. That right, as you're fighting against the constraints of this hostile HTTP environment to what you're trying to do. I think this is really interesting. I think we could, I'm interested, I think there's a, other, a bunch of other people uh, that would be interested in rallying around some of these things. So I think this is parking lot and do stuff. And at the very least, we can use the IPFS uh, discourse forum, point at GitHub issues, know where to go if people are interested in recruiting. Feedback and yeah. Right, and all of these other things, right? Like I think a lot of these, uh, we're looking for shelling points. Uh, to gather around, basically, right? Like, like in some cases, we're here because we all need to share about IPFS, mm -hmm. right? And so this is the, like, let's riff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, thanks. That's a great idea. I appreciate the opportunity to, to share this info and give this fantastic presentation. You're all lucky to join. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, like, I think there's a ton of ideas, like, and ideally, this is the kind of thing that we can make quest submissions for end users and ambassadors who hang out in the forum in different ways. Like, for instance, like, can we get everyone to run the IPS version of Wikipedia to your whole edge node thing? And, you know, like this month, uh, 10 million views over IPS, uh, and we're sort of like locally. Like, like but it's not us, and it's not only in English, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That would be, that would be Actually, some awesome PR, cool. huh? It, no. is this, is desktop is. Desktop is. Yeah, web well, UI and desktop is. Well, like, uh, a lot, like 90 plus, and it's using trans effects, which yeah. is community supported. You can yeah. sign up to support. So this is the kind of thing. Could we literally do a per layer yeah. ambassador program? Yeah, totally. You're hired. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.